ओके सो जेनेटिक टेक्नोलॉजी एंड एग्रीकल्चर जेनेटिकली मोडिफाइड प्लान्स प्रोटीन्स फॉर यूज इन मेडिसिन कैन बी प्रोड्यूस फ्रॉम जेनेटिकली मोडिफाइड प्लान्स सो एवॉइडिंग एनी प्रॉब्लम्स ऑफ कॉन्टामिनेशन बाय एनिमल प्रोटीन्स एग्जाम्पल्स इनक्लूड वैक्सीन्स एल्बोमिन एंड द प्रोटीन्स फाउंड इन ब्रेस मिल्क दैट आर यूज टू टेक डायरिया इन इन्फेंस सो दे कैन बी um produce from plants genetically modified plants however the vast bulk of genetically modified plants grown around the world are crops modified to be resistant to herbicides such as glyphosate and glyphosate or crops that are resistant to insect pests this modification increases crop yield a few crops such as vitamin vitamin a enhanced rice provide improved nutrition so usually uh, the genetic engineering in plants is actually used to increase the crop yield 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 of the crops because um some herbicides herbicides are chemicals which are used to kill the weeds not the crops but some herbicides also damages the crops which does decreasing yield of crops so if the crops can be genetically modified to be made resistance to that herbicide then the crop won't be damaged and thus yield won't be decreased and also against insect pests feed on the uh, crops thus again reducing yield so they can be genetically modified to be resistant to those pests and also few crops are enhanced with vitamin a like rice this is also done this is also made possible because of the um genetically in genetic engineering okay genetic engineering has also resulted in rice having enhanced vitamin a vitamin a in okay, so herbicide resistant plants what is herbicide herbicides are used to kill the herbs the weeds the unwanted plants beside our um, crops wanted crops what is the problem of having like these weeds these plants will take in the water and nutrients which we will give to the crops we want and thus there will be competition and the desire the desirable crops may not get the nutrition so they need to be destroyed they are destroyed by using herbicides but those herbicides also damage our crops and thus we need to genetically modify the crops so that they can be resistant to the those herbicides that is those herbicides won't have an effect on the crops we will look at how this happens wild seed tray is grown in many parts of the world as a source of vegetable oil which is used as biofuel a biodiesel fuel as a lubricant and in human and animal foods the natural ray seed oil contains substance erucic acid and glucosinolates that are undesirable in well that is to be used in human or animal food a hybrid bred in canada to produce uh, uh, low concentrations of this undesirable substance was called canola and this name is now often used to mean any variety of wild seed grape so suppose that there is a gene that produces those undesirable products but if we could genetically modify and delete those genes then those products on be formed and the well can be made even healthier that this is done with the help of gene technology um genetic engineering yeah so gene technology has been used to produce herbicide resistant strains growing a herbicide resistant crop allows fields to be sprayed with herbicides after the crop has germinated killing any weeds that would otherwise compete with the crop for space light water or ions i have explained why a herbicide resistant um crop 
was needed. Okay. Uh, so oil seed that is resistant to the herbicide glyphosate or to the related glufosinate is grown in a number of countries because this being um, resistant to this herbicides means that they won't be damaged and if they damage the crop yield will be increased crop yield will be increased and if they're not uh, sorry, if they're damaged the crop yield will be decreased and if they're not damaged the crop yield increases so glyphosate inhibits an enzyme involved in synthesis of three amino acids phenylalanine tyrosine and tryptophan glyphosate is absorbed by a plant's leaves and is transported to the growing teeth the amino acids are needed for producing essential protein so the plant dies thus um, since the uh, enzymes uh, are not are inhibited by glyphosate and those three amino acids couldn't, couldn't be formed the plant is gonna die that's why glyphosate resistant crop is needed but the not the wheat the amino acids are needed for producing essential products of the plant as various microorganisms have versions of enzymes involved in the synthesis of phenylalanine, trypsin, and tryptophan that are not affected by glyphosate. The gene was then transferred into crop plants, came from a strain of the bacterium, agrobacterium. So, some bacterium also produces those three amino acids, but they use different enzymes. And those enzymes are not inhibited by that herbicide. So if we could, if we have learned how genetic engineering can be used to insert genes. If we could extract those genes producing those enzymes, we know that genes produce enzymes, uh, proteins, and enzymes are proteins. So then those enzymes will be produced in the crop plant. And thus, those three amino acids that were um, initially missing, will be produced again and so um, the, the, the crop yield would not, would not decrease thus gene technology again helps increase the crop yield it actually doubles because you can spray herbicide thus the weed is dead increasing crop field and since that herbicide don't damage the plant crop field is increased even more genetic technology is really useful Tobacco has been made resistant to two different herbicides, sulfonylurea and dinitroaniline. In both cases, the genes were taken from other species of plant. So, uh, when we talked about the um, um, glyphosate, um, how it um, stopped, how glyphosate affects the to, to uh, prevent the effect of glyphosate the genetically engineered the gene that was taken was taken from bacteria but when um, tobacco is resistant to two different herbicides and those are different from glyphosate for that resistance the gene needed to be taken from other species of plant very easy not much thing to explain actually the most likely detrimental effects on the environment of growing herbicide resistance plants are there are disadvantages the genetically modified plant will become an agriculture wheat pollen will transfer the gene to all relatives producing hybrid offsprings that are invasive weeds herbicide resistance weeds will evolve because so much of the same herbicides is used so genetically modified plant will become an agriculture weed what is a weed Weed is an unwanted plant and if for example uh, the crop we do not need it to be present in one field but they will be present because they are herbicide traced and thus it will become an agricultural weed okay it's not a weed it is um, agricultural product but we do not need that product in our field and thus that uh, crop will become a weed thus we call it agricultural weed and pollen will transfer the gene to wild relatives producing offspring, hybrid offsprings that are invasive weeds. So what are invasive weeds? That means that these weeds spread really fast. We will look at this point in detail um, later down. Wild relatives are, you know, ancestors. Maybe they are 
um, genetic uh, genomes may have some like um, similarity with other types of species which we do not need and thus if that pollen uh, it, since their uh, genomes are quite similar the pollen may infuse uh, I mean like may infuse with the flower and uh, with the stigma and thus that new um, offspring offspring plant that will be produced will have that resistance gene and that is actually a bad thing now herbicide resistant weeds will evolve because so much of the same herbicide is used we know that evolution um the surviving of the fittest and those stuff since so much of the her herbicides will be used like it will cause a change in the environment of the weeds and so they will want to adapt thus they will maybe um modify modify their genome in such a way that those new um evolved species of this weed will be resistant to the herbicide and thus we cannot destroy them using the herbicides which is actually a nightmare okay in 1993 an investigation to compare invasiveness of normal and genetically modified well seed rape was carried out three genetic lines were compared non-engineered versions of this uh, non-engineered oil uh, seed rape and two different genetically engineered versions of the same cultivar okay the rates of population increase were compared in plants grown in a total of 12 different environments. The environments differ, for example, the presence and absence of uh, presence and absence of cultivated and anti-cultivated background vegetation and presence and absence of various herbicides and pathogens. There was no evidence that genetic engineering increased the invasiveness of the well seed rape plants where differences between normal and genetically modified, modified plant existed the genetically modified plants were slightly less invasive than the unmodified plant so these are actually some research that happened but no conclusion has been dropped in this book the risk of pollen transfer by wind or insect is real yes wild seed rape interbreeds easily with two relative species wild radish and wild turnip its flowers are adapted for insect pollination but are also pollinated by the wind. Although safe planting distances are specified for trials of genetically modified plants, um, pollen from various plants have been found between um, 1000 and 1500 meters away from those plants. Bees visiting some flowers have been found to forage at distance of more than 4000 meters. Safe planting distances should be increased to allow organic farming industry to maintain its genetically modified free certification so nothing much to explain here actually experimental crosses between um, glufosinoid resistance wild seed and both wild radish and wild turnip have shown that resistance can be passed to the hybrid offspring and that it is it persists through several further generation of their offspring however there is still a little evidence of that occurring outside the laboratory so in laboratory it is shown that of course they can be hybrided and also their the offspring of the hybrid species will also carry um that herbicide resistance gene and thus you cannot destroy it using the herbicide so herbicide resistant mutant plants of various species have been found growing near fields where glyphosate has been much used yes herbicide resistance uh, mutant plants may form i have explained however the herbicide is not only used on resistance crop species gene technology is not directly responsible for this evolution of resistance which may arise in the absence of any genetically modified crop so basically uh what we can what we want to learn here from all these examples and scenarios is that genetic engineer can be used on in also plants to produce or to make it how we want to or to produce any products that we need and also in the um, quantity we want the quality we want and herbicide resistance crops can be also uh, made so that the crops which you want can be resistant to the herbicides and there are also many disadvantages so and many a few researchers have also had like a controversial if a result and so that's what all it says okay, so insect resistant crops another important agriculture development is that of genetically modified plants 
protected against attack by insect pests. Maize is protected against the corn borer, which eats the leaves of the plants and then burrows into the stalk, eating its way upwards until the plant cannot support the ear. Cotton is protected against pests such as boll weevil. In both plants, yield is improved. So, genetic engineering can also be used to um, protect, to e uh, modify the plants in a way that they can protect themselves from insects. Okay, insect resistance tobacco also exists and is protected against the tobacco badworm, but as yet it has not been grown commercially. The most likely detrimental effects on the environment of growing an insect resistance crop are the evolution of resistance by insect pests. A damaging effect on other species of insects, the transfer of allergen to other species of plants. So, how does um, resistance is evolved by the insects? We will learn this um, right now. And damaging effect on other species of insects that um, the mechanism by which the plants are made insect resistant, pest resistance, may also. Um, damage or destroy other species of insects which do not damage the crop, thus decreasing biodiversity. The transfer of the adagen or to other species of plant, the adagen may be um, transferred to other species of plant and cause an unwanted evolution in that those plants to initiate. However, less pesticides is used reducing the risk of spray carrying to and affecting non-target species of insects in other areas. Remember that only insects that actually eat the crop are affected. So if we do not use genetically modified insect resistance plants, then we have to use insecticides, it's, else the insects are going to destroy our plants. And if that happens, that insecticide will also um, destroy the insects which we do not want to be destroyed. But genetically modified insect resistance crops only affect those insects that does harm to the crops. Okay. And also that's why um, many insects are also needed for the crops to grow healthy. So those insects are not going to be killed if we use genetically modified insect resistance crops. A gene for toxin, Bt toxin, which is lethal to insects but that eat it but harmless to other animals, has been taken from a bacterium. Okay, different strains of the bacterium produce different toxins that can be used against different insect species. Nothing much to explain here. Basically, um, the crops will be made to produce a chemical, Bt toxin, that is going to only affect the targeted insect but not other animals or insects and this is taken from the species of bacterium B thuringiensis and different strains of this bacterium produce different types of beta toxin that can target different types of insects we will use genetic uh, technology just like we used for insulin production. We will insert the gene into the crop. For that first we will insert it into the plasmid and then the plasmid um, will be inserted into the crop seeds. Um, this will. How does this happen? We will see them in detail later but initially just think about this. Plasmid is ex extracted, that gene for beta toxin is extracted. Recombinant plasmid is made, the plasmid is um, inserted into bacteria, the transformed bacteria are then used to insert those plasmids into the crops because those bacteria only affects, uh, those transformed bacteria will affect the crops and if the crops are affected then those bacteria will produce uh, transcription and translation of their gene. And thus, the recombinant plasmids gene will also be translated and transcripted and translated, and thus, beta toxin will be produced. You see, nothing much to explain here because you have already explained so much before. <coughs> Many populations of corn borers in the US are now resistant to beta toxin. From the onset, growers have. Um, oh, 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 sorry, sorry. Large number of crops 
uh, 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 crop plants that contain Bt toxin gene from B thuringians is produce their own insecticides. So yeah, this Bt toxin is an insecticide. However, insect pollen populations can evolve resistance to toxins. Large number of crop plants containing the genes for Bt toxin may accelerate the evolution of resistance to it. Yes, we know that um, definitely evolution and surviving of the fittest and thus uh, the Bt toxin huge number of Bt toxin present in their environment will cause a change in the environment of the bacterium and thus they will evolve to adapt to that environment and thus resistance to Bt toxin may form so we have to take uh, preventive measures many population of corn borers in the USA are now resistance to Bt toxin from the onset, growers have been encouraged to plant up to 50% of their mazes as non-genetically modified uh, maize is so-called refugees. But resistance in corn borers happens to be recessive allele. Adult corn borers in the uh, refugees are mostly homozygous dominant or heterozygous. These insects apply the dominant alleles to counter resistance when adult corn borers from the field and refugees made. So, you know one information that the gene for resistance to Bt toxin in the um, um, insect is actually recessive. Thus, if we, uh, if for example, there are many um, heterozygous recessive, um, sorry, 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 homozygous recessive genes, uh, genes carrier of the insects are present, then main, their offspring also have homozygous recessive and thus this will be resistant but if we have introduced homozygous dominant or heterozygous dominant then the probability of um, a uh, total homozygous recessive um, insect growing will be decreased you, you can do it in a chart say you mate two recessive homozygous uh, okay fine let me explain it here Suppose that uh, the recessive is like the red color. Their children, their children, this is the father, this is the mother, their children will be all homozygous recessive. Probability of um, recessive uh, 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 insects being produced is increased, but, but if um we use refugee um refugee just like the um, normal unmodified genetic um uh, um crops then those the corn borers in those unmodified um uh crops will not be resistant to those um bt toxin because there is no bt toxin and thus they will not have that much of the recessive allele but if even if there is like um, say for example one type we will look at both the parents whoops both the parents are homozygous dominant and for example we have um, no 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 say one this one is from refugee so i'm i'm gonna have to write an r here so that you do not mix up this one is refugee and this one is like the original so definitely the uh, resistance produced in the genetically modified plant is homozygous recessive because if it was um, dominant like heterozygous then also the recessiveness or, or the recessive allele would not be expressed that much and thus uh, partial resistance would occur so the children all will have like all will be heterozygous and thus all are partially recessive partially a resistance and thus not fully resistant but if there were no uh, refugees then all of them would have been um, homozygous recessive and thus the 
refugees, I mean like the unmodified crops, contains the heterozygous or homozygous dominant alleled insects and the modified ones will have a lot of number of the recessive <coughs> uh, recessive gene carrier insects which are resistance so if they mate with the insects of the refugees then the children won't be like resistance or at least they'll be partial resistance but if there were no refugees then all of the children would also be resistance and which would be a bad effect on our environment because then even if we use bt toxin well uh, the insects won't die because res uh, resistance has for a new generation of resistance insects has been formed okay so the pollen of bt maize expresses the gene and has been found to disperse at least 60 meter by the wind in us milkweed frequently grows around edge of maize field and is a food source for the caterpillars and monarch butterfly half of the summer population of monarch butterfly is found in the maize growing areas of the us an experiment was set up with caterpillars or feed milkweed just with pollen from bt maize pollen from unmodified maize or no pollen at all so a um experiment was carried out to see the effect of the pollens of the um modified crops had any effect on the butterflies or the caterpillars or not let's see the result caterpillars are out of four days of feeding on leaves dusted with pollen with bt maize was 56 percent while there's no caterpillars died after eating uh, leaves dusted with pollen from unmodified maize or leaves with no pollen does the pollen from the genetically modified plant does um, have an effect on the um, species of monarch butterflies which are which are, which are not pests thus they decrease biodiversity which means that the modified you know we have also learned one point that it will damage other species of insects the genetically modified plant has caused damage to other species of insects for no reason this is bad however for the studies have shown that laboratory based experiment doesn't reflect the situation in the field where the butterflies and caterpillars are not normally present at the time when pollen is shed so that's a good thing in practical when the pollen is shed the butterfly and caterpillars are not present and thus they are not affected that's a good thing various aquatic insect larvae lived in the streams of the maize growing um, of the maize growing areas of the USA leaves from gen leaves from genetically modified bt plants end up in the streams and may be eaten for example a caddis larvae experiment showed a small reduction in growth of cabbage fed on bt leaves and the experiment in which caddis larvae were fed on materials containing different concentration of bt toxin found a significant effect on larval growth as a constant Concentration, concentration twice that already found in the streams. This is yet a potential rather than an actual problem, but one that needs careful monitoring. So even the uh, leaves from the bt toxin affects the other species of the um, insects, like the caddis larva, which is in the water. So they do not only affect the pests, but also the um, insects which are not pests to the crops we have to take it into account because those insects may be needed for other purpose and biodiversity is also being decreased for that right uh, there is a thought to be a danger if vitamins is grown is Mexico of it pollinating its wild parent species um, Testiosin and teosinte and transferring genes to it. However, it has been found that maize pollen, once released from the anthers uh, and exposed to air, is not viable up to This triggers a two hour wind drift distance between a genetically modified crop and any uh, teosinte habitats. Which means that if, if the, the Genetically modified plants, um, pollen from the anthers, uh, if they can like fuse in the stigma of their wild relative, which means it's like uh, their genes, the genes of both the plants are quite similar, and thus the 
a gene for beta toxin is transferred to them and thus those plants the offspring of those plants will also produce beta toxin thus again reducing biodiversity even further there is some evidence of reduced population of microorganisms in soil in which bt maize has been growing but a practical um, detriment has been seen that's a good thing it must not be forgotten that forget uh, forgotten that genetically modified uh, crop seed is expensive and that its cost may remove any advantage of growing resistance crops growers need to buy seed each season which again gives the cost high when compared with those of traditional varieties in parts of the world where a great deal of a genetic modified crop is grown there is a danger of losing biodiversity so there are also problems that these are expensive yes it's true crop yield is increases and thus profits increases but the expense also increases so you have to take that into mind and biodiversity is also losing because i just explained that they do not only affect the species of insects which how it harms them those toxins bt toxin produced by those plants also affect other insects we have seen in many experiments and they also transfer the genes to their wild relatives thus increase decreasing thus increasing the uh, probability of decreasing biodiversity even more because they are not the only one producing bt toxins now that they have transferred their genes to their wild relatives those wild relative species of plants are also producing bt toxin this is thus uh, biodiversity is being lost so overall here what you have learned is that genetically modified plants plants can be genetically modi genetically modified to fight against um there are pests and this insecticides do not need to be used there are advantages and disadvantages of doing that we have seen in many scenarios examples and experiments okay so golden rice um let me kind of explain you what is golden rice basically rice enhanced with vitamin a so just like insulin production insulin gene was inserted into the bacteria to produce insulin here the gene for produce that produces vitamin a will be inserted into normal rice to do this simply we extract the gene of that produces vitamin a um, and also extract, extract one plasmid and make recombinant plasmid uh, um, put the plasmid into another bacteria that's gonna like infect the rice and thus um, after infecting the rice the bacteria will do translation and transcription and translation and thus the bacteria's gene will also contain the gene for producing vitamin a and this vitamin a will be produced in that rice and um yeah that's the basic thing of the whole thing that we're gonna now read with some disadvantages and advantages and some outline rice is a staple staple food in many parts of the world where people are poor and rice forms the major part of the diet deficiency of vitamin a is common and serious problem vitamin a deficiency can cause blindness the world health organization estimates that um, as many as 500,000 children go blind each year as a result of vitamin a deficiency even more importantly lack of vitamin a can cause an immunodeficiency syndrome and this is a significant cause of mortality in some parts of the world particularly in children it is estimated that in 2010 more than two and a half billion million children died of vitamin a deficiency vitamin a is a fat soluble vitamin um, found in well efficient um, animal products such as eggs milk cheese and liver it is also made in our bodies from carotene the orange carotene pigment from found in um carrots like the carotene produce the um uh carotene is transformed into like um uh, uh 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 the vitamin a so yes it is also made in our bodies from carotene the orange carotene pigment found in um carrots so carrots also help uh, provide with vitamin a pro vitamin a carotenoids are also present in cellular layer of rice grains but <coughs> not in the um, endosperm the energy storage tissue in the seed that humans eat so 
this is the aluron layer layer like the skin of the seed and endosperm is like this part which stores food for which the um, embryo here the embryo will use to grow into the plant so yeah the aluminum layer layer is removed from rice when it is polished to produce white rice brown rice still contains the aluminum layer the aluminum layer goes rancid if rice is stored for any length of time which is why white rice is produced and usually eaten instead rancid means it will like um it will um go rotten yeah children of families living in property often lack animal products in their diet as they are too expensive even if such children have a diet containing wide range of vegetables rich in carotenoids it is still difficult for them to pro avoid vitamin a deficiency you know carotenoids are formed used to make vitamin a in 1990s a project was undertaken to produce a variety of rice that contains carotene in its endosperm genes for carotene production were taken from daffodils and common soil bacterium now named pantai pantuya ana ananatis yeah it's a hard name <laughs> usually we don't have to memorize this we have it in our chart so yeah and insert it into the rice so the gene that will produce the carotenes which will be transformed into vitamin a in the body is produced from is taken from these two um samples and so yeah further research shows that substituting the gene from daffodil with one form of maize gave even higher qualities of quality quantities of carotene and the single transformation with this gene is the basis of all current golden rice so basically these are the sources of the genes from which it sources from which it collect the genes for making the carotenoids or carotene yeah uh figure 19.2 to shows how the uh research was carried the genetically modified rice is called golden rice because it contains a lot of orange pigment carotene okay uh genes for production of carotene was extracted from maize and the bacteria um pantonoia ananatis so from these two um samples the gene for producing carotenoids was extracted these genes together with promoters were inserted into plasmids because without promoters we know that um translation on occur uh yeah so they were like this is the recombinant plasmid the plasmid was in inserted into bacteria and this bacteria will infect plants so yeah the recombinant plasmid is in the bacteria the bacteria naturally infect plants and so could produce the genetically modified plasmid into rice cells they were mixed with rice embryos in petri some of which are infected by the bacteria carrying the carotene genes so these rice are infected by this bacteria and inside the rice the bacteria will um, use transcription and translation to produce the proteins also this recombinant plasmid will be transcripted and translated so the gene that produces the carotenes will also be transcripted and translated and the carotene will be produced easy as that and thus when one seed is planted it forms into many seeds and thus all of the seeds will be genetically identical and thus all of the seeds will produce carotene the rice embryos now contain the carotene genes were grown into adult plants they produce seeds containing carotin in their endosperm so easy since the embryo contain the gene all the seeds from that embryo also contain the gene that's <coughs> how mitosis occurs nothing must be explained here the genetically modified rice uh, is being bred into another varieties of rice to produce varieties that grow well in the conditions in different parts of the world with the same yield um, pest resistance and eating qualities as the original variety so many varieties of that rice is produced 
For example, the International Rice Research Institute has worked with researchers in Bangladesh to produce a pro-vitamin A enhanced golden variety of Bangladesh's most profil- um, popular rice variety. Research with children in China has shown that golden rice may be useful as a source of vitamin A from vitamin A capsules, eggs or milk to overcome vitamin A deficiency in rice consuming populations. There has been quite a lot of controversy over golden rice. Several non-governmental organizations oppose the use of genetic engineering in any crops have condemned golden rice as being the wrong way to solve the problem of people eating diets that are um, short of vitamin A. One of their arguments is that the main reason that people eat diets that are short of vitamin A is poverty. And the way to solve the problem is to help out of poverty so that they have access to a more varied diet. Others say that it allowed much better if we would somehow leave these people out of property this cannot be quickly achieved so despite the research development and evaluation of golden rice that has taken over the last 10 years it is not yet available to farmers or consumers because it has not been approved by national authorities in each country first with the help of the scientists who initially donated their technology invention and international network of public sector rice research institutes and funding uh, from bodies such as the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, golden rice seed will be made available in developing countries at no greater cost than white rice seed. Everyone agrees that we should, we need to solve the root causes of poor diets, which include numerous political, social, and economic issues. But meanwhile, pro vitamin A enhanced rice could help millions of people to avoid blindness or death. Nothing much to explain, it's just how genetic technology is used to produce vitamin a enhanced rice okay so genetically modified animals genetically modified animals for food production are much rarer than crops as an example is genetically modified atlantic salmon developed in the us and canada a growth hormone regulator regulating gene from a pacific chinook salmon and a promoter from another species of fish and ocean pout were injected into a fertilized day of an atlantic salmon so the pacific chinook salmon had a growth hormone regulating gene which regulated the growth of uh, the production of growth hormone and growth hormone is responsible for the growth of the salmon so the chinook salmon uh, growth hormone regulating gene was i mean like produce more growth hormone you know and thus this it was inserted into um, was to be inserted into the atlantic salmon but a promoter was needed the promoter was collected from the ocean pout we know that promoter is needed okay this is not artificially produced promoter that's why we are not calling it a primer it's a natural promoter that's why we are calling it a promoter so what is the fertilized egg a fertilized egg is when the male sperm and the female ovum like um, fuses thus that one cell zygote will form into a whole cell salmon so if we just insert the gene into one cell then and also in a way so that after mitosis all of the other cells will have um, the gene because we know that usually genetically engineering after genetically engineering of a cell when mitosis occurs that added gene is not like uh, found in the daughter cells but here it is genetically engineered in such a way that those added gene are found in the daughter cells so th- that is usually it and thus more growth hormone is produced and the salmons grow faster by producing growth hormone throughout the year the salmon are able to grow all the year instead of just in spring and summer as a result fish reach market size in about 18 months compared with three years needed by an unmodified fish it is proposed to rear only sterile female and from the in land based turk rear means like growing for selling only sterile females were grown and sold maybe because that if the um, unsterile ones were grown and sold maybe if somehow they could be uh, introduced into the environment then that that genetically engineered organism um, will mate with the wild um, salmons and thus the um, gene pool or the genes of the um, original salmons will be changed as the daughters 
I mean like the children or the um, babies of those fish will have the added gene in them which means that a new gene is added into the wild species too but they do not want this to happen and land based tanks are basically you know artificial tanks but which are on land not like the plastic tanks the characteristics of genetically modified salmon reduce their ability to compete with wild salmon in natural ability this has led to use food and drug administration to declare they are highly unlikely to have any significant effects on the environment and as safe food as con Conventional Atlantic salmon, and even if by chance the unsterile, unsterile fish was introduced in the environment, they could not survive compared to the wild salmon, and so thus they would not pro uh, cause problem to the environment. Like when I already explained that if they are genetically modified salmon and are wild salmon mated, then the um, daughters, I mean, like the um, uh, eggs or the fish produced from those fish will have the added gene in them genetically modified gene in them so thus the wild gene will be like maybe the um, probability or percentage of wild genes will decrease in the environment we do not want that to happen we want wild species genes to be um, available in the environment forever so that we can use it we will see about this later um, in 2013, Canada approved the production of genetically modified salmon eggs on a commercial scale. But neither Canada nor the USA FDA has yet given permission for genetically modified salmon to enter the human food chain. Social implications of using, using genetically modified organisms in food production. Some genetically modified plants are grown in strict containment in grass glass house but a totally different set of problems emerge when genetically engineered organisms such as crop plants and organisms for the biological control of pets are intended for it in general environment. Can such organisms be used safely? It might seem likely that few countries would object to the growth of genetically modified crops that produce vaccines for human and or animal use. Yet there are people who object the growth of pro-vitamin A enhanced rice. However, most objections are raised against the growth of herbicide resistance or insect resistance crops. The concerns about these genetically modified crops are as follows. The modified plant may become an agricultural weed or invent, invade natural habitats. I have explained already because, because like they are insect resistance and also herbicide resistance. So they cannot be killed normally. They need to be killed in a different way. The introduced genes may be transferred by pollen to wild relatives whose hybrid offsprings may become more invasive. Just like the number one problem but it will be caused by the transfer of pollen to wild relatives and their offsprings will be like the genetically modified and thus they, those also become um, art agricultural weeds or, and even more in invasive like more dangerous they will grow more fast and cannot be killed that easily the modified plants may be a direct hazard to humans, domestic animals or other beneficial species by being toxic or producing allergies for example we have seen that how the Bt toxin produced from the plants may also affect other non-target species of insects. Like this, other problems may arise. The herbicides that can now be used on the crop will leave toxic residues on the in the crop. We use herbicide resistance crops so that the herbicide uh, do not affect the crop, only the weeds. And so if that happens, then the herbicides sprayed on the crop will be on the crop. Like, and when we we'll eat the crop, we, we may also consume the herbicide if it is not washed properly. So this is a problem and genetically modified seeds are expensive as is herbicides and their cost may remove any advantage of growing a resistance crop. I have explained this also. Growers mostly need to buy seed each season keeping costs high unlike for traditional varieties which are uh, which where the grower keep kept seeds from one crop to sow for the next. So, um, in art genetically modified plants, the, their seeds cannot be further used to produce the same genetically modified plant because those genes are not um, present or active in the like offsprings produced by those seeds because uh, we genetically modify one seed, we grow it, all of each seed has the gene but when those seeds are again used for growing those the offsprings from those seeds will not have the gene or maybe that those seeds do not grow at all it may depend on the circumstance but we do not know it do not need to know it in detail in this chapter or in this book we will know it in advanced level biology books 
growers uh yeah and that's why i, I explained oh and this is like the bigger one is the genetically modified salmon and smaller one is the wild relative they are of the same age but genetically modified salmon has grown bigger because it is genetically modified it has the extra gene which regulates the growth hormone and the growth hormone is um, produced all over there and it grows bigger yeah so and the problem in parts of world where a genetically modified crops are grown there is a danger of losing traditional varieties with their desirable background genes for particular localities and there are possible unknown traits that might be useful in the world where the climate is changing because just if the um percentage of genetically modified crops and in animals increase then their wild relatives percentage will decrease because they are not grown they are not favorable they are not um we do not um produce them the wild uh, varieties and thus gene pool is reduced they may be even uh, it could be happen that they become extinct the wild relatives became extinct because we do not grow them we do not sell them we do not commercially produce them okay so uh this requires a program of growing and harvesting traditional varieties and setting up a seed bank to preserve them because we may need those really wild related genes for some research anytime and we do not want them to become extinct right um despite these concerns there are now millions of hectares of genetically modified crops and trees growing across the world in the usa in 2020 2011 half the cotton crop and more than half the maize and soya crops are genetically modified significant areas of china brazil and india are used for these crops and farmers in developing countries are adopting growth products of gene technology with enthusiasm the exception is europe with its careful but strict control but europe also has well organized groups of protesters almost all of the field trades of genetically modified crops that have taken place in the uk during the last 10 years have been vandalized but there are any uh, but are there any damaging effects on human societies of genetic technology have any of the theoretical hazards had an actual effect on human societies there is little evidence of gene escaping into the world no super weed has um, appeared to reduce crop growth there are no examples of food produced from genetically modified organisms unexpectedly turning out to be toxic or allergic unless the known effects of genetically modified crops become much greater than have so far been measured the effect of human societies may be said to be small but positive there are the uh, possibilities effect that cannot be yet measured such as future consequences of any loss of biodiversity from growing genetically modified crops so actually nothing much to explain here because basically it's the same thing that we have been learning this whole chapter so yeah that's basically it